when we talk about variables the ordinary variables that we had seen can store one piece of information whereas arrays can hold a number of pieces of the same data type like uh, integer or float these two data types can handle a lot of situations but we often deal with entities that require a collection of different data types for example if we want to store information of a book we might want to store its name its price and the number of pages in it so this three will require three different data types like the name will require a string the price will require float and the number of pages will require an integer now to store this information we have two approaches one is we can construct individual arrays one for storing the name another for storing the price and one more to store the number of pages so let's say we have 10 books so we create arrays of size 10 for each of them the other one is the use of a structure variable which we will be discussing in this module and we'll see how structures make it easy for us to deal with data of different types so let's take the first example where we create individual arrays now if we see the program here we have the main function where we are creating three arrays name price and pages and we have given the size 3 Three because we want to store the information of three books. Now we read this information from the user in this for loop and we print them. Uh, we print the name, we print the price and the pages. So the output will be let's say the name is only one character long. So we have the name, the price and the number of pages and so on. So this is the data entered by the user and this is what we get in the output. this approach no doubt allows us to store the name price and number of pages but it hides a very important fact that we are dealing with a group of characteristics of a group of information related to one single entity the book so if we go back to the example just by checking the name we can't say which of these prices is related to it it hides the fact that a 100 and 354 are related and they are characteristics of one single book right now there are three different data the name the price and the pages let's take another example let's say we have multiple sensors installed in five different rooms the temperature sensor humidity luminosity motion and sound sensors if we are to construct individual arrays for these sensors it will look something like this where we have the temperature of size 5 the 5 signifies the number of rooms and the humidity luminosity motion and sound and using a for loop we read the values through the functions that are written to read the particular sensors now again by looking at the values we can't say that they are related to one room or we can't take a value and say uh, if we want what is the temperature of room number 2 we'll have to see temperature 2 or we want the humidity then it will be humidity 2 and so on no doubt we are getting all the information here but the information is not grouped together as an entity as a room it's separate now again we are storing all the information but they are not dealing with a single entity the room the program also becomes more difficult as the number of items relating to a room goes on increasing for example we want to add more sensors so we'll have to add more arrays to it this problem is solved by using a special data type which is called the structure structures are user defined data types in c languages like arrays allow us to combine data of the same types together structures allow us to combine data of different types together structures help us in constructing a complex data type which is more meaningful just like the name price and number of pages of a book those are different data types but we are clubbing them together under the name of a book or the number of sensors in a room think of it as an advanced version of an array an array stores data of only similar type but structures on the other hand can store data of any type which is practically more useful for us let's see an example for this so in this example we are using a structure where we are defining a structure using the keyword struct and the name of the structure is room and we are defining the member variables of this structure the member variables are the temperature humidity luminosity motion 
and sound and then we create structure variables the structure variables are room 1 sorry r1 r2 r3 r4 and r5 so here we have the structure variables instead of having the variables as temperature humidity and luminosity and their arrays we have the variables as r1 r2 r3 so r1 represents room 1 r2 represents room 2 and if we read the sensor of room 2 we know that the temperature is particularly of room 2 and not of any other room the terms r1 r2 r3 r4 r5 are called the structure variables these are the structure variables of type room and the characteristics of these variables are declared in the structure the characteristics or the member variables these are the temperature humidity etc now to store the temperature of room 1 we use the following we use r1 dot temperature the dot is called the dot operator the dot which we see here between r1 and temperature is called the dot operator and similarly we can store information of other sensors as well in the following way r1 dot humidity r1 dot luminosity r1 dot motion detected r1 dot sound level so now whenever we read r1 dot humidity we know it corresponds to room 1 r1 dot luminosity corresponds to room 1 and similarly for room 2 3 4 and 5 now how do we define a structure to define a structure we use the keyword struct struct followed by the name of the structure in this case we are dealing with a room so we give it the name room in case we are dealing with book we give it the name book or anything meaningful which defines our structure this is called the structure name or the structure tag then the variables that we mention inside the structure are called the structure members in this case we have uint 16 temperature uint 8 humidity and so on these are all the structure members and then we have the structure variables or elements so now r1 r2 r3 are variables of structure room and these are the member functions let's see the use of a structure in a program 